This is the Kohinoor Diamond, also known as the Mountain of Light Diamond. It came into Queen Victoria's possession in 1850 and was displayed in the Indian section of the Great Exhibition in 1851. It was one of the most popular objects on show because at the time it was the world's largest known diamond. Here on the left is page number six from the Illustrated Exhibitor, Guide to the Great Exhibition. It shows a drawing and a description of the diamond. Within the exhibition, the Kohinoor diamond could be seen inside a golden bird-like cage, as you can see in the drawing here on the right. From surviving personal accounts, we know that seeing the diamond in its original form in person was actually rather disappointing for visitors because the diamond did not sparkle. To try and show the diamond better, it was moved to a new display cabinet with gas lamps and mirrors in hope that this would make it sparkle. But this did not do the trick and over time visitors lost interest in the object. This led Prince Albert, husband of Queen Victoria, to get the diamond recut to make it look more impressive. Cutting of the diamond took place in 1852. Here you can see what the diamond looked like before and after being recut. The cutting took 38 days and because of its many flaws, a lot had to be cut away. This meant that the size and weight of the recut diamond was a lot less than when it was in its original form. The much lighter but more dazzling stone was mounted in a tiara and a brooch, which is a badge-like accessory and worn by Queen Victoria herself. Today the Kohinoor diamond is set into the cross at the front of the Queen Mother's crown. This object can be seen alongside other crown jewels on display at the Tower of London. But how did the Kohinoor diamond from India end up being part of the crown jewels? Under the reign of Queen Victoria, the British Empire grew massively. More and more land became part of the empire. During this time, objects of wealth were regularly stolen from their home countries and taken back to Britain and put on display. So who does the Kohinoor diamond really belong to? And is it really a stolen object? It is tricky to work out exactly where the Kohinoor diamond came from, but for centuries, India was the world's only source of diamonds. It is therefore agreed that the diamond probably came from the ancient Indian riverbeds. Ownership of the diamond has caused a lot of arguments, as over centuries it has been in the hands of Mughal princes, Iranian warriors, Afghan rulers, Punjabi Maharajas and the British monarchy. This has meant that India, Pakistan, Iran and Afghanistan have all demanded its return from the UK at different points in time. The Mughal Empire ruled India for 330 years. On the left, you can see an image of the peacock throne. This was made for the ruler of the Mughal Empire. The diamond was placed at the very top of the throne. In 1739, a Persian ruler invaded Delhi. When he left the city, he took lots of stolen treasure with him. This included the peacock throne. He removed the Kohinoor diamond and two rubies and wore them in an armband, which can be seen here on the right. This is what was presented to Queen Victoria in 1850. In the early 19th century, the diamond was returned to India into the hands of Sikh Punjabi rulers. But around this time, the British East India Company was taking more and more of India's land and its natural resources. In 1849, the East India Company defeated the Sikh Empire. This meant that Punjab became part of British India. This defeat ended up with the ruler of the Punjabi throne having to sign a legal document called the Treaty of Lahore that made him give away the Kohinoor diamond to the Queen of England. The Treaty of Lahore was a legal document, a peace agreement, but many people still believe that the diamond was stolen by the British and that the Kohinoor diamond is a symbol of Victorian Britain's power and control over the world because of how they were able to take objects from around the world and display them in Britain. There is still a lot of disagreement about who the diamond should belong to. The rulers who once owned the Kohinoor diamond ruled nations that no longer exist and the long chain of events of stealing the object makes it difficult to work out who it ultimately belongs to. 
Possible agreements have been suggested, like dividing the diamond up and giving a piece to all of the countries who believe they should have it, but the British government have rejected all of these suggestions. What is clear is that the history of the diamond should be explained to visitors to the Tower of London, so people understand the long story behind it. Do you think it is right for Britain to have the Koh-i-Noor diamond? If not, which country do you think should have it?